compile some of the latest Asian news for you in today's episode, and here they are. During his visit, Singaporean Foreign Minister met with Timorese Prime Minister Shanana Guzman. The Singaporean Foreign Minister met with Timorese Prime Minister Karera Shanana Guzman on the second day of his visit to Timor Leste. He stated that Singapore wants to continue to deepen cooperation with Timor Leste in the future. Prime Minister Shanana Guzman is a old friend of Singapore, someone we deeply admire and respect. He has fought for the independence of this country. You have delivered a difficult birth, but a country which wants to stand on its feet, a country which is going to be part of ASEAN, but a country which is a country that Singapore supports respects and will want to work very closely in the future. I think the future is bright. Uh, the Prime Minister, the President, the Cabinet has got many big plans. Uh, I was reminded that in fact the government has only been in office for 24 days uh, but I can tell you, that, you know, I've met the Foreign Minister five times already in overseas and here. Uh, and it just shows you how much, how intense the work is going to be in the next five years. So, Prime Minister, rest assured of our fullest support for your agenda and your program. Thank you. I wish you all the best. And your people, all the very best. Thank you. Timorese Prime Minister Shannon Guzman added that Singapore is an exemplary country for Timor Leste in which Timor Leste should cooperate with. Then we have for example, the a country that gives us good example, there are many fields where we can participate and build good cooperation with Singapore. Timorese Prime Minister also said, Singapore wants to establish its embassy in Timor-Leste in order to facilitate cooperation in the future. Portugal will continue to support Timor-Leste's development and Timor-Leste accession to ASEAN. Once he has concluded his meeting with the Timorese President of the Republic, the Prime Minister of Portugal, Antonio Costa, said Portugal will continue to support the development of Timor-Leste in the future and also Timor-Leste application to join ASEAN. It's an honor, as I was welcomed by the President of the Republic, José Ramos Horta, a figure that makes a great difference for all of us and the world, a Nobel Peace Prize laureate, and is a close friend of the Portugal. In general, whatever Timorese does, Portugal can participate in the development process. In particular, the accession of Timor-Leste to ASEAN is a good prospect. This means the opportunity for the Portuguese company to be able to take advantage of the wisdom of Timor-Leste's knowledge in the market. Timor-Leste and Portugal have been cooperated in various fields so far and the aim of the Portuguese Prime Minister visit is to strengthen ties between both countries. Portugal and Timor-Leste will establish new strategic cooperation plan for 2024 till 2028. On July 25, 2023, Prime Minister of Portugal, António Costa, met with Timorese Prime Minister, Carola Xanana Guzmão, and discussed bilateral cooperation between Timor-Leste and Portugal. Timor-Leste and Portugal have been cooperated in various fields so far, and the aim of the Portuguese Prime Minister visit is to strengthen ties between both countries. This visit took place at an important moment in which the newly formed government of Timor-Leste just started its duties and we are preparing the new strategic cooperation program between 2024 to 2028. This visit also to identify what are the main priorities of the cooperation from the new government of Timor-Leste. This was a very special visit because at the beginning of this government's term, the Prime Minister talked about the 2024 to 2028 cooperation plan. I hope that this friendship that all is shown by supporting this young nation to move forward, especially for Timorese people to experience the value of independence. During today's visit in Timor-Leste, the head of the government of Portugal met with the President of the Republic, José Ramos Horta, Prime Minister Carol Chan Guzmão, the Parliament Speaker, Maria Fernanda Lai, 
as well as visited the Portuguese embassy in Timor-Leste, the Santa Cruz Cemetery, Portuguese schools in Dili, and also inaugurated the Portuguese Language Center at the Timor-Leste National University. Antônio Costa promised to support Timorese students and workers in Portugal. On Wednesday, 26th of July 2023, the Prime Minister of Portugal, Antonio Costa, made a courtesy visit to the Timor Leste's National Parliament and met with the Parliament Speaker Maria Fernanda Lai. After the meeting, Maria Fernanda Lai informed that the Portuguese government will facilitate student and Timorese workers in Portugal and therefore they will have access for works in Portugal. He made a commitment that he will establish an education attaché to assist young Timorese students, as well as for Timorese workers, whom so far are seeking jobs in Europe, but they have been abandoned in Portugal. I appreciate it. And in the future, Timorese youth will have access to training that will help them find jobs in Europe. Marie Fernandele also added that the visit of Portuguese Prime Minister to Timor Leste is to deepen the cooperation between both countries, especially the bond between Timorese and the Portuguese. IOM continues to cooperate with Timor Leste's government to assist Timorese immigrants abroad. The Chief of Mission of the International Organization Migration, Ima Sharif, met to the President of the Republic of Timor-Leste, José Ramos Horta, and discusses IOM support to help Timorese immigrants in foreign countries. We continue to support the government in uh, implementing some of these laws and policies, and uh, we hope that we can create a system of safe and orderly migration for all of uh, the Timorese who go overseas. She added that IOM continues to support the Timorese government to implement the law to protect Timorese immigrants abroad, because the Timorese people on the overseas also contribute economically. So IOM, we work with the government. Uh, as an intergovernmental organization, we support the government to uh, regulate, to institutionalize laws and procedures. For the Timorese that are overseas, uh, recently IOM has supported in the development of a number of policies. Uh, we also encourage the revision of legislation that will regulate unethical recruitment. Um, as well as making sure that Timorese can migrate safely. So we also want to make sure that we work closely with the government to make sure that we can protect Timorese and also provide the conditions where Timorese can actually benefit from migration. But actually, Timorese who go overseas contribute significantly to Timor-Leste. They bring back 172 million US dollars a year in remittances, which helps build communities and families, and also contribute significantly to the countries that they live in. They contribute socially, whether they're going for studies or education, but they also contribute economically by working overseas as well. The International Organization for Migration also encourages the revision of the legislation that regulated any requirement to guarantee the safety of Timorese immigrants. Malaysian Prime Minister visits Vietnam to strengthen cooperation in various fields. Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim met with his Vietnamese counterpart Pan Minh Chin in Hanoi to boost bilateral relations. After a welcoming ceremony at the presidential palace, the two leaders attended a meeting and oversaw a signing ceremony with aims of strengthening cooperation in various fields, including defense, the digital economy and green energy. As a good neighbor and friend, China warmly congratulates Cambodia on successfully holding the seventh general election and congratulates the Cambodian People's Party under the leadership of Prime Minister Hun Sen on winning the election. Anwar is also scheduled to meet with other senior Vietnamese leaders, including President Bo Van Tuong, during his first visit to Vietnam since he took office in 2022. According to the government websites, Malaysia is one of Vietnam's largest investors with a total registered capital of $13 billion, while two way trade reached $14.8 billion US dollar last year, with the two countries agreeing to aim for a balanced two way trade of $18 billion US dollar this year. China congratulates the Cambodian People's Party on winning general election. Thank you. 
Chinese Foreign Minister Spokeswoman Mao Ning said China congratulates the ruling Cambodian People's Party on winning the country's general election and wishes Cambodia a smooth election of the new National Assembly and government. A total of 18 political parties contested the election, which was held once every five years to elect 125 lawmakers for the National Assembly of Cambodia. The Cambodian National Election Committee was still counting results from across the country on Sunday evening, as official ones will be released on August 9. Sunday's election was Cambodia's seventh since 1993. In the previous general election held in 2018, the CPP won all 125 seats in the National Assembly. Philippines war drugs victims' families remained hopeful after International Criminal Court ruling opened way to murder investigation. Families of victims of the Philippines' war on drugs remained hopeful. Appeals of the judges at the International Criminal Court rejected an attempt by the Philippines government to block an investigation into the thousands of killings during former President Rodrigo Duterte's tenure. Because they, International Criminal Court, have decided that they will push through with the investigation. It is a big win for us. It brings up that someday we will get justice. Balang araw, makikamit namin yung justicia. Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., running mate of ex-president Duterte's daughter and now Vice President Sara Duterte said the government will not honor any request of arrest warrants and has up to this point refused to allow the country to rejoin the ICC. In September 2021, the ICC approved a formal investigation into possible crimes against humanity allegedly committed under Duterte's leadership, but it suspended its probe in November 2021 at the request of Manila, which said it was carrying out its own investigations. But in January this year, the court said it was not satisfied that the Philippines is undertaking relevant investigations and prosecutors resumed their inquiry. Manila appealed the decision in an attempt to block further investigation. At least 15 killed and 19 missing in Indonesia ferry sinking. The National Search and Rescue Agency said Indonesian authorities were searching for missing passengers after a ferry sank off Sulawesi Island, killing at least 15. The agency said in a statement that of 40 passengers on board, 19 were still missing, while 6 survived. The cause of the sinking, which occurred at about midnight, was still unclear. The vessel was ferrying people across a bay in Muna Island, about 200 kilometers or 124 miles south of Kendari, the capital of southeast Sulawesi province. Ferries are a common mode of transport in Indonesia, an archipelago of more than 17,000 islands, and accidents are common as lacks of safety standards often allow vessels to be overloaded without adequate life-saving equipment. And we have reached the end of today's program. Thank you very much, everyone. We will see you all again soon. Have a nice weekend.